Hello, 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 my beautiful, lovely puppies. And welcome back to yet another fanfiction reading. And we are back with the Random Doom fanfiction trend thing. <laughs> and once again, this story is by the user Axel230. And this story is called Fear of the Dark. So basically what happened in this story is there's a Pokemon battle going on a little miles away or a short few feet, few inches, few uh, distances away from the Random Doom ranch team. And with one trainer's Gengar using the move Nightmare, uh, the attack misses the original target that the Gengar had fired at and the move hits a younger version of Vincent, who is a real Lou in the story. He ends up having a nightmare and is absolutely terrified of the dark. So the only thing that can comfort him and calm him down is the, at the time of the story's writing, Monferno Veruca. And I am going to read the description slash synopsis of this story before getting into the fanfiction itself, so here we go. Aw, don't you just love the younger versions of the Red Doom staff? If you're wondering why Vincent is such a crybaby, well, he was four days old. Don't know how much it is in Pokemon age, but I'm sure he was less than a year old and was still a baby. Hehe. <laughs> it was easy to mess up with Ross, remember he's Jenna's spoiled brat. Wonder why he didn't become arrogant. That trainer wasn't me, it was, er, my cousin, yeah. <laughs> he used to be into Pokemon, just the game. He's Karu... Karuma? I think that's how you pronounce the person's or the character's name, I think. I don't think there are Growlithe or Arcanines or Volbeat slash Illuminous around Jenna's ranch. They were on migration. Let's say that. <laughs> The story came to me after reading a Rosas Riolu by Colorado, and I did previously read Rosas Riolu. Check the video out if you wanna. Let's say it's something like a prequel to that, happened about two days before. I had this story on mind since so long, but I wanted to wait until I was a level 10 writer, which I'm by now have uploaded 10 stories so far. I don't know if that's nerdier than that sounds. Or sounds nerdier than it is. Oh well. This was supposed to be a short story, but end up longer than expected. Had to work about six days. Sorry if it's not well written or if Vincent gets really repetitive. I'm not that good yet. I try to make this look somehow professional. Made mostly on PSP writer. Spell check on word. Okie dokie. So I may have to separate the audio in parts. In regards to this story and this story alone because it is a little bit longer than the previous stories but in any case if you guys want to read along i will leave a link to the fanfiction in the description below and with all that being said and done let's get right into it as midnight drew near an innocent creature ran for dear life trying to lose his pursuers Breathing heavily, he came to a stop. Knowing he wouldn't last much longer, he turned to his back and put his guard up. He wasn't going down without a fight. Unknown to him, his foe had just appeared right behind him, ready to take him down in one move. Okay, Gengar, use hypnosis, called a nearby male trainer. Gengar did as his master ordered, rendering the Growlithe defenseless, making him fall into a deep slumber. Well done, now use Nightmare. The Gengar started building dark ripples of energy inside him, aiming towards his now asleep opponent. But suddenly caught him by surprise. A flamethrower came out of the woods, hitting him on the side, making his attack lose its target. Then out of the blank appeared an Arcanine. It tackled the sleeping Growlithe, waking him up. Both fire types turned towards his bow. No good! Use hypnosis again! The Gengar did as told, making the Growlithe fall asleep once more. But it didn't seem to affect the Arcanine, who wrapped himself in fire then hit him face full with a combination of extreme speed and flame wheel. The Gengar backtracked, 
overwhelmed by the attack's strength, but managed to keep his ground. Without further order, he let out another hypnosis. This time, the Arcanine fell to the floor, just like the Growlithe did previously. Okay, now that they're asleep, use Dream Eater, ordered the trainer. The Gengar opened his mouth, and out of both the Growlithe and Arcanine came out a greenish-blue gas-like substance, which he inhaled, recovering him from the previous battle. As for the Miss Nightmare attack, it kept going on and on. Normally, Miss Shots ended up hitting a wall or a tree or faded away, but nothing crossed this one's path until it hit a nearby unexpected target. Night had fallen on a nearby ranch, and most of the Pokemon and human in there were asleep. Most of them gathered around the campfire site, and out of all the Pokemon in there, the attack was to hit one of the youngest ones. A young little Riolu was slumbering peacefully after having trained all day. He was exhausted, but there was a grin on his face, knowing he had done his best. Suddenly, his peaceful dreams became clouded by dark energy. Almost instantly, he began to shake violently. He was slowly being tortured in his sleep. He suddenly woke up and rose up to a sitting position. Desperate, breathing heavily, he started to look around. Try to find something to relieve him, to make him forget what he had just seen, but found nothing but fear around him. He was unable to see anything clearly around him. His eyes were not yet used to the darkness. Everything around him was clouded by this. He tried waking up, trying to believe he was still dreaming. He came to a curled position, trying to calm himself, but it was helpless. He was unable to move, paralyzed by fear. Everything around him had turned into what he feared the most. Just like that time, he was alone, alone in the darkness surrounding him. A shiny pink Baneri had woken up too. She had to do something, in order of her own body. She came to a standing position, had a big yawn, with her eyes half closed. She started walking towards a more private space when she felt something. A mixture of sadness and fear struck her. Unable to tell what was happening, she looked around, but it was pitch dark. She was unable to see anything. She jerked her head and continued her way. When she heard something, it sounded like a low sob, and it was coming from somewhere nearby. She turned her head towards the source, and the sobs continued. A strange curiosity and fear came to her. She wanted to know what was happening, but knew it could be dangerous. She caught a better glimpse, and noticed the little crying Riolu. Having no one else nearby, she went to wake up a weasel she was really fond of. Napoleon! Napoleon! She said lowly, as she tried waking up the weasel. Uh, what do you want, Cotton? It's late. He protested without even opening his eyes. Napoleon, Vincent woke up! <sighs> Get back to sleep, will you? No, he's... crying. Maybe he just wants his mommy. <sighs> Noticing that the weasel wouldn't help her, she went to wake up the next teammate she found. Ross! Ross! She whispered as she slightly shaked a Pikachu wearing a collar. He started stretching his arms out. <sighs> What is it this time of night? There's someone here. What? He jumped into a standing position. Wait, what's this weird feeling? He said as his ears went upwards. He was hearing some sobs too. I don't know, but I think it's making Vincent cry. We should tell Master Jenna. I think we should talk to Vincent first. Okay, but let's wake up Rupert first. They walked to a nearby crow gunk. They had to shove him hard to wake him up. What was that for? He snapped angrily as he gained a standing position. It's Vincent. I think he's not feeling well. Just as Cotton said this, Rupert's expression changed to a concerned look. That little Ryu was one of his best friends. The three of them walked in the direction of the sobs and found the little Ryu all curled up in a fetal position with his eyes closed tightly. Vincent, is that you? Cotton asked. The Ryu opened his eyes and looked back at them. He felt slightly safer now that he wasn't alone, yet they were able to see that his eyes were covered in tears. The religious sniffled and sobbed harder. Hey, Vincent, you okay? Asked the crow gunk. The Rilu just shook his head. What's wrong? You heard something? Asked the Pikachu. The Rilu shook his head once more before sniffling. You had a bad dream? Asked the Baneri. This time, the Rilu nodded and let out a large sob. Aww. She embraced him in her arms. Vincent broke into tears. <laughs> Where's <laughs> Veruca? Why is he asking for Veruca? Ross whispered to Rupert. Oh, I remember now. He's afraid of the dark, and Veruca always lights up the campfire. The Krogunk whispered back. Uh, that's a good question, Rupert said, rubbing the back of his head. I thought you were her best friend, Rupert. You always hang around together. Well, I don't know where she is while I'm asleep. Where am I? Vincent said between sobs. He didn't even know where he was. In his past four days of his life, he had always slept inside his Pokeball. 
You don't know? You're at Master Jenna's ranch, answered Ross, much of his relief. What happened? He asked gloomily before sniffling. Well, today was your first day of training. You do remember that, don't you? You overdid it and exhausted yourself. You were all out of energy, completed Ross. And when you were switched for Veruca, you fell asleep almost instantly. Master Jenna had no heart to wake you up, so she carried you asleep all the way back home to the ranch. We all thought you wouldn't wake up until tomorrow, added Napoleon. Napoleon! I thought you weren't coming! cried Cotton excitedly before running up to snuggle him. You guys were too noisy. I couldn't even get back to sleep, he added while stretching his arms and yawning, pushing Cotton away. I think we should bring you to Master Jenna, stated Ross. But... <gasps> Veruca, <gasps> said Vincent, breaking into tears once more. You want us to take you with her? Asked Cotton. Vincent nodded. Okay, I'm going to go look for her, said Rupert, as he darted towards the woods. I'll go get Master Jenna, said Ross, as he dashed towards the ranch house. Don't worry, Vincent. Everything will be okay, said Cotton, trying to comfort Vincent. Oh, by the way, we're gonna need more firewood for that campfire. Rupert called out from the woods. Napoleon, could you? Asked Cotton. Whatever, the weasel said as he walked slowly towards the ranch house. Rupert disappeared once more into the woods, leaving Cotton and Vincent alone. Maybe we should go looking for her too, don't you think? Asked Cotton. The real just sobbed and nodded. All right, just stay right next to me. Vincent said nothing. He just held onto the Benary's fluff. This was uncomfortable for Cotton, but if it was coming Vincent's nerves, she let him do it. They went into the woods, too. Ross was having a hard time getting into the ranch house, for the door was closed. Great. Now what am I supposed to do? He thought, feeling slightly frustrated. He walked around the ranch house, expecting for his master to come out. Deep down inside him, he knew this wasn't going to happen. He kept walking, wondering what to do. When he noticed a window of the back side of the house was open, he mentally facepalmed for not noticing it earlier. He started climbing up the wall, but then came to a halt. His strength wasn't enough to lift himself. Just great. Finally found a way inside, just to find out I can't get in. I knew I shouldn't have seconds. He talked to himself angrily and started climbing down. What are you doing, Ross? Asked a sarcastic familiar voice. Napoleon, what are you doing here? He was startled, since a weasel used to bully him. I asked first, buddy, he said as he approached a nearby pile of wood. Ross realized he was getting some firewood. Well, I was trying to find a way inside the ranch house and found this open window, but it's too high for me. Would you mind giving me a hand? Just before he had finished, Napoleon sent him flying over the window. Ross landed on his head, letting out a little squeak, but inside the ranch house. Ouch! That Napoleon, I swear one of these days. He was talking to himself once more, rubbing his head and raising a knuckle. He looked around and noticed he was in a familiar room. Much to his luck, the window led to his master's bedroom. Okay, now all I've got to do is wake Master Jenna up, he said as he climbed up Jenna's bed. The young woman was woken up by a small shake. She half opened her eyes. Everything around her seemed blurry. She wasn't wearing her glasses, but she was able to tell the silhouette of a yellow mouse-like Pokemon. Ross, how did you get in here? Pikachu! Pika! Pikachu! Ross was waving his arms desperately, trying to make her understand. What's wrong, Ross? Can't sleep? Chew. He sighed. His trainer seemed to misunderstand him. Come here, Ross, she called him. The Pikachu didn't dare disobey. She wrapped her arms around him in a teddy bear-like position and went back to sleep. Must not fall asleep, he said, trying to resist. But he felt a sudden comfort in his trainer's arms. His lips suddenly began to grow heavy, and so did his head. It was long before he gave up. Cotton and Vincent were walking through the woods. It was pitch dark, and neither of them had an idea of where Veruca could be. The little Riolu wouldn't calm down. He knew he could trust the Benary, but he was afraid of everything around him. His eyes were still covered in tears. The Benary wanted to do something to comfort her crying friend. But what to do, if she only knew what he had dreamed? Vincent, I have heard that it's easier to forget a nightmare once you tell someone about it, so... Why don't you... She stopped because she noticed he grasped tighter and heard him sniffle. You don't want to talk about it? She said in a deep, comforting voice. The Rilo just shook his head. Tears began to form in his eyes once more. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you cry. 
I'm not crying because of that. He said in a weak, breaking voice. Then, why are you? She said lowly. I don't... I don't like the dark. Ever since... He stopped. His voice broke. He was overwhelmed by the fear of the memories of that dark cave. He had been in a few days ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. She said, trying to calm him. Since he had burst into tears once more. He's afraid of the dark. I know what to do. I just hope Rupert is doing fine. She thought as an idea came to her. Vincent, I think I know where Veruca is. She lied to him, but she had a plan in mind. Rupert was wandering around aimlessly by the woods. He went to one of the female Monferno's favorite places, but found no trace of her. <sighs> where the heck is Veruca? And why on earth did she go into the woods at night? He thought as he kept walking in a straight line. At least he knew where he was. He wasn't lost. He was going in the direction of a tree stump, not actually expecting to find her there. But then he noticed a small, yellow-orange light in the distance. There she is! He cheered up, knowing where to go, but then noticed the light was moving fast. Looks like I'll have to catch up with her, he said as he dashed towards the light source. Okay, and that is all the time I have for this fanfiction. It is definitely going to be a long one, so I may have to separate it into parts. Like, this is going to be part one. Hopefully there will just be only a part two to the next fanfiction. But that's pretty much all the time I have for this little video. Again, links to everything are in the description to the original creator of the Random Doom fan uh, Pokemon comic and the author of the fanfiction as well. And I apologize for the noises. They're doing some yard work in uh, the neighborhood I'm currently at right now, and it is driving me crazy. But what are you gonna do? Anyway, that's all the time I have for this video, and I will see you guys in part two. And with all that being said and done, cue the outro. RP is out. Peace!